Welcome to Istanbul, Istanbul Turkey. Welcome to Istanbul <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> Let's see. I think we should go down and then up. Are you so in the center? I feel like you need to be like right no, here. No, no. We've been BFFs for 15 years. But we live really far away from each other in the States. And we figured what better way to reconnect than a week-long girls trip in Istanbul. So come along with us. Okay, so how did we get here? So first I was lucky enough to be invited on a press trip to Jordan. One of my favorite places in the world in my former home. I have a full video up on that adventure on my channel if you wanna see it. And I actually lived in Jordan for two and a half years before when I was a US diplomat and I worked at the embassy in Amman. So it was a really cool chance to go back as a tourist. That Jordan trip was at the beginning of January, but then at the end of January, I was hosting a group trip in Egypt for members of my subscription community. I had planned a custom itinerary for us to try local food, see ancient sites, and float the Nile on a private boat. And I thought to myself, why in the fuck would I fly home to the US for one week in between these two projects and deal with the jet lag if I could just find another option? So with the creative use of some United Miles, Marriott points, and a gift certificate that I had won, I opted to head to Istanbul to pass the time. And on a whim, I invited my best friend, my oldest friend, thinking it would be really fun to have some time together to just explore and be silly and eat. And you know what? She was like, fuck it, let's do it. So I flew in from Jordan and my best friend Nicole is flying in from the US and I think she's about to arrive. Is she gonna notice me? Do you think she's gonna notice me sitting over here in the corner? So first and foremost, this was a French trip. So I didn't film as much as I usually would, but I will take y'all through the stops that we love, which you should definitely add to your list for a visit to Istanbul. First up, we have to get into the food. And yes, my friend, she loves to eat as much as I do. So most of what we explored in the city involved food. And the highlight from our trip, the thing we loved the most was the two markets, two continents food tour that we booked through Culinary Backstreets. This tour lasted a whole day and we met our guide Kadir in the morning and then we started off with a quick stop in Ketakoy, in a neighborhood that was a center for industrial production in the Ottoman era and remains somewhat industrial today though artisans and artists have begun to move in. There we had Simit, which is a Turkish circular bread typically coated with sesame, Almost like a bagel, Kadir said it should crunch a bit when you break it, which is a sign that it's freshly baked and it has a nice crust. We tried it with a salty cheese, which Kadir said is typical, and it was so good. And you'll see lots of street vendors selling Simit throughout Istanbul. After that first bite, we then went for a second full breakfast, which included things like pickled thyme leaves, rose jam, and various cheeses, including a water buffalo cream that was so rich served with honey. And of course, we made a baklava stop at a well-known spot where the family has been making baklava for centuries. Oh, I love it. Isn't that great? That's really dangerous. We also had borek there, a savory pastry made with filo dough stuffed with filling. So, so good. Then we stopped to try shelgam, a pickled purple carrot juice that's salty and a bit spicy. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know. It's like drinking pickle juice from the jar. It is. Oh no, I love I do that. love pickles though, you love so I love I'm not that. opposed, it's just not what I expected. We also tried Tentuni, a grilled beef wrap that's really fresh and bright with parsley and lemon juice on it. Then we crossed the Bosphorus on the ferry to Katakoy, a neighborhood full of street art on the Asian side. There we wandered and we made multiple stops and we tried to get a sense of the neighborhood and one of my favorite stops was for kokoreç, which is sheep intestine cooked with other offal and it's chopped and served up as a sandwich. I really liked it, and it reminded me of something I would eat after a night at the bar. My little sheepy. Sorry, sheep. Bomb. Yep. And I can't go through all the stops on this tour. It was incredible. It was so long. We tried so many things. But the last stop, we popped into a coffee shop at the end of the tour, and we tried Salep a sweetened seasonal drink made from the bulb of orchid flowers, which was so good and it had a really delicate flavor. I highly recommend this tour if you're a foodie and it's a really great way to experience multiple neighborhoods in Istanbul. And we also took a second food focus tour, this discover Syrian food slash culture in Istanbul tour that we found on Airbnb experiences. There's a large Syrian population in Turkey and in the city, so this was a cool way to learn more about that particular community. So on this tour, we explored parts of Fatih, which is a really big district in Istanbul, where a section of it is home to many Syrians. And there, our guide Yaman took us to Syrian restaurants, sweet shops, and coffee places, explaining a little bit about the history of Syrians in the city and how they've continued their own traditions. We stopped into places like Buz al Jiddi, a well-known spot for hummus, falafel, etc., which was founded by the son of a man who started 
the original Booz and Jiddi restaurant in Damascus in 1922. We also stopped into Fatih Mosque on the tour, which gave us a glimpse of some of the architecture and design that you can find throughout Istanbul's many mosques. To enter, you have to take your shoes off and women have to cover their hair. They have hair coverings there that you can borrow if you don't have one. And be sure to look up when you're inside. We ended that tour full and happy and it was a really cool experience. And then beyond tours, there's a couple restaurants in the city that I wanna shout out that we really enjoyed. The first is Juma, rated Bib Gourmand in the Michelin Guide for providing great food at a more affordable price point than the Michelin starred restaurants. We ended up eating at Juma more than once on our trip. The setting is super cute. We loved the food, which draws on Mediterranean influences and more traditional Turkish dishes. And I could see the patio being a vibe in the warmer months. And then for a spendy option, we headed to Effendi for a tasting menu that was so creative and fun. There's little caviar bubbles on it. There's little like, it's so good. Okay, that is absolutely gorgeous. This was definitely our splurge, but it was worth it. The cocktail menu was really creative. The service was outstanding. And I loved everything from the hummus to their take on pastilla. Okay, so clearly we went to Istanbul to eat and to spend some quality time together since we never see each other as often as we'd like. But in addition to eating everything in sight, we really did have a blast exploring the city as well. We mostly walked around, exploring some of Istanbul's mosques, shopping in the Grand Bazaar, and just tried to see what we could get into. We also got an Istanbul cart, a card that you can load funds on to use public transit, and it was so easy to use that card for buses and the metro to get around. We did use some taxis as well and had no issues. And I know Uber works in Istanbul and you can also use the app B-Taxi, which is similar to Uber. And as we explored the city, one of the stops that surprised us with how much we enjoyed it was Galata Tower, a 67 meter tall watchtower in central Istanbul built in 1348 on the site of an older tower. We made a quick stop there as the observation deck was closed, but there were really cool exhibits on the inside with some history of the tower and the area, plus amazing views from the windows. Then we popped into this cafe right across from the tower, Viana Kahvesi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, for a San Sebastian cheesecake. I admit, the cheesecake is a trend from a few TikToks we saw, and we were skeptical, but it was really good. <laughs> it was light and airy, and they offer the option to have it covered in melted chocolate. We chose dark chocolate, and it was not too sweet, which was ideal for our taste, though they also have a milk chocolate option. This is one trend I would say yes to again, and the area around the tower is really cute to walk around and explore. And we also had to hit up a hammam, also known as a Turkish bath, a steam bath or public bathhouse associated with the Islamic world. We booked a private hammam experience and massage so we can enjoy it without having to get naked with strangers. Oh, you look ridiculous. You look insane. Here we go. So I came today. <laughs> Which I've done before, and I'm fine with public hammams, but it was Nicole's first time, so I thought we should ease her in, and it was lovely. I'll link the hammam we used in the caption. Okay, so we just got back from your first hammam experience. What was it like? Describe the hammam portion before we got to the massage. Well, we put on a beautiful pair of disposable panties. They were super fashionable and very comfortable. And then we went to the most hot, like scaldingly hot, but amazing stone room with all these beautiful faucets and marble everywhere. Um, but I definitely burned my butt cheeks when I sat down because they were so hot, the stones were. And then a very nice lady wet me down with some soap. That was nice. It was a nice little ease into it. And then she scrubbed an entire 85 layers of skin off of my body. And now I think that I have newer skin than a newborn baby. There was lots of very warm water and then very cold water and then very warm water again and insane amounts of foam. Reminded me of when I was a kid taking a bubble bath. I, I mean, I've never exfoliated parts of my body that she did, but now I'm like, I think I've been bathing all wrong this whole time because I've never felt cleaner in my whole life. And then finally, this seems so simple, but was really special. We hired a local photographer that we found on Airbnb Experiences to take some photos of us in the city, and I'll put his details below. This is something that I do pretty frequently when I travel, as I'm usually behind the camera and I struggle to take good self-portraits. And I highly, highly recommend this if you want good photos of yourself on vacation or on a trip and don't think you're gonna wanna set up a tripod and try to do them yourself. And for me and Nicole in particular, we've been best friends since freshman year of college and we have so much fun together, but we always forget to take photos together. So these pictures from this trip ended up being some of our only friend pictures together that we've had in the last 10 years. And look at how cute we are. I love it. 
Anyway, we really didn't try to do or see at all on this trip. We left a lot of unstructured time to explore and just sit and talk and do nothing, and it was ideal. That's how I prefer to travel when I'm on my own schedule, and I can't think of any better way to explore Istanbul. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos like this, exploring food, travel, and so much more.